Hello friends, no doubt a great CV is a tool that you need in order to land on your dream job because it gives you the chance to make a memorable first impression on the recruiter and also stand out among the crowd and proceed to the next stage. As requested by many people, in today's video I will show you how to write a professional CV by yourself without input from anyone going forward and also you can enjoy all the enormous benefits that comes with it. In case you are new to this channel, my name is David Peter Olubayo. Feel free to subscribe, like and share this video as you will definitely find it interesting. As we begin, it's important to remember that big recruiters get hundreds to thousands of CVs for just a job opening and may not have more than 10 seconds to decide whether to call you for the next round or put you in the rejection path. This is why writing a quality CV can't ever be overemphasized. To that effect, a well thought out CV is what you need to attract recruiters, which also eventually save you time from applying to tens of job openings and set you apart from the crowd. That is why, first of all, to make the most of your CV, a lot of people do not do what I'm about to recommend to you. Make sure to perform a quality research on the industry that you are applying to in order to understand the specific skills that are essential for that role. You will be able to list out the skills in demand for your target role by reviewing 5 to 10 vacancies for the same job role. After this, it is quite important for you to then reflect, take time to reflect on your own skill set, values and achievements so far and how all these align or matches the job or the complaint you are applying to. If you are able to do this, or let's assume that you depend on some certain specific skills that is relevant and in demand for your job role, it is now time for us to look at how to structure and format your CV. All right, let's talk about the CV structure and format. The main thing is that you have to keep it highly professional. If you look at the sample provided to your right hand side, uh, it's just one color on a white background. You want to make it simple with no fancy fonts and colors and concise as much as possible by providing only relevant details. Relevant details are those who are applicable to the job role you are applying to. Regarding the length, I want you to keep it to the maximum of two A4 pages. No need of hiding photo as this can also eat to your limited space as well. Another thing is to make sure that your CV is easy to navigate by recruiters and you can achieve this by providing bold sections and make sure whatever you've written is readable by ATS. ATS is applicant tracking system which large recruiter uses in order to skim through CVs are looking for keywords and they would usually put some CV straight away into the rejection pile before seeing them. In order to keep your CV simple and readable by ATS, simply design on Microsoft Word. Some people are tempted to use CorelDRAW and some fancy bit. This is not generally acceptable. In order to maximize space, consider simply stating that your reference or references are available on request. Now let's consider what the content of a CV is. A lot of people have asked about how to write a CV that is specific to the UK health industry. But to the best of my knowledge, I am not aware of anything specific than the fact that, uh, sadly, the industry is more than anything experience or skill driven. I mean, it's all about you having the skills to care rather than all the qualifications you have acquired. It doesn't mean that they don't matter. In that case, apart from your contact details and professional profile, the next thing the recruiter want to see is either the core skills or relevant skills you are bringing on the job or your work experience. However, there is something about hyping your strengths which might make you to alter this flow. 
Take for instance, if you don't have any health background or experience, you might want to put your education or qualification first. That is to say that how you arrange this depends largely on putting your strength first. Hi friends, if you enjoyed this video so far, why don't you click on the like button, subscribe if you haven't and share with family and friends. By doing this, you will be supporting and encouraging me to do more. Now, let's start looking at this content one after the other while I give you examples. Now, the first thing is that your name has to stand boldly at the top of your CV. A lot of people also put the care role they are applying to or something that summarizes their role so far. Like, as you can see in the one showing on your right side, I've put the name is John Smith, which is boldly written. And 8K assistant was just sitting uh, below it. Some people prefer to put this beside their name. Now, the next thing is your address. Some people also believe that you don't have to put your full address. Your email address and regarding your email address, make sure that it is a professional email address. Nothing like beauty king, beauty queen at gmail.com and all that. <laughs> all right. Now, the next thing uh, so that they can contact you, your contact number. And remember to always put the, your country code. You might want to also add your LinkedIn link to make sure that anybody can also look you up on LinkedIn and sat, confirm certain information before inviting you for an interview. Things to bear in mind is that you don't have to write your religion, your date of birth, nationality, and etc. This only eats into the limited space that you've got and does not in any way put you in a better chance of being invited for the next round of the application. After your contact details, the next thing a recruiter wants to see is your professional profile. Now, this is quite important in the sense that this is what the recruiter will see first. And your aim is to persuade the recruiter to read the rest of your CV. Therefore, use this section maximally to give a summary of your relevant experience and skills. I will then move on to certain things which you can include in your professional profile and the other bits that you should not include. Now, what are the things to include? Your years of experience, especially which is health related, the settings where you have worked in, whether it is in a hospital or in a community setting, and you want to hype the fact that you've probably worked in the setting that you are applying for right now. The next thing should be your unique selling point. How your values uh, tally with what the organization is looking for. If there is any specialty you have worked in before and you've gained competence and expertise in. And you want to talk about your core skills. Now, the things not to include had details that are not relevant to HK. This also is not a narrative summary of your career and do not include anything that can be considered as excessive. Um, in writing your professional profile after you've mastered the things to include and things to ex exclude, make sure to avoid pronouns. Instead of saying that I am a qualified and compassionate healthcare assistant and I have 10 years experience, make it professional by saying I a qualified and compassionate healthcare assistant with 10 years experience in dot dot dot. All right. Now, a good hint about what will make sure you wrap in around here is the six C of care, which are care, compassion, competence, communication, courage, and commitment, among other things. Now, I'm going to provide you with an example of a professional profile. Now, every example I'm providing here is too generic for you to copy and paste. 
It's just for you to, to provide an example to what I'm explaining, but the tips I'm providing along the line is generally what you need. Now, a qualified and compassionate HK assistant with over 10 years experience and expertise in neonatal, ophthalmology, diabetic, and psychiatric hospital clinics, as well as community care. Confident providing personal care to children, adolescents, and adults, able to monitor and record vital signs and observations in line with professional guidelines. Takes pride in maintaining patient confidentiality and treating every individual with dignity, offering emotional support and empathy in addition to practical care. Now, this is not far from what you want to write. Okay, so moving away from the professional profile, next is your core skills. Now, when we talk about the core skills, this enables the recruiter to see at a glance whether you have the competencies and skills that are required for the available role. So it's important for you to include at least 9 to 12 keywords. To do this, as mentioned earlier, have a look at some of the vacancies in that job role you are applying for to establish what skills are particularly in demand. As a guide, within the healthcare industry or the caring industry, you want to think about the six C of care, which are care, compassion, communication, courage, competence, and commitment, plus all that job-specific skills that are needed for the job role you are applying for. Remember the other time I said that this industry is skill or experience driven. So your work experience enables a recruiter to identify whether your experience to date aligns with the requirements of the role. So if you have minimal professional experience in the healthcare sector, but have some relevant voluntary experience, you need to add them into your work section. For each of your previous roles, provide your job title, employer name, and date of employment, as you can see in the example provided. It's standard for you to present your work experience in reverse chronological order. So the recruiter sees your most recent and relevant experience first. I hope you get that. So you want to talk about your most recent experience first. Now, importantly, avoid the temptation of adding all the responsibilities from your previous experience. Important are those that align with the new job that you are hunting. Okay? And if you observe that the recent experience in the sample I've provided here was developed better than the previous, this is usually the case. Don't forget to add your key achievement and if possible, please put a value. And also be ready to explain any employment gap on your CV. For your education and qualifications, just like in any other industry, you should certainly include any qualifications you've acquired. And in this case, most especially those that are healthcare related. For example, a BSc or a MVQ. If you've passed GCSE also, which can show your mathematics and English, you have to include this as well. For each qualification, make sure to state the level. In this case, in the example provided, MVQ Level 3, Diploma in Health and Social Care, the name of the qualification and the year you've completed it. If you've completed any short healthcare courses, for example, infection and control. As you can see in the example provided, this particular person have completed 15 standards of care certificates from Flores Academy and the date included. So, if you've completed any short healthcare courses, take a separate professional development section as you have seen in this video. So, in summary, make sure to spend time writing a short, high-impact profile, identify your key skills in the healthcare sector, write out your experience in reverse chronological order, and make sure that each rule you mention, you mention something that you achieve, which are your key achievements. If you discover that I've not mentioned the regular hobbies that most people put on their CV, only consider to put this on your CV if it is relevant to the job role. And don't forget to check for grammar and spelling errors. 
By doing all this that we have discussed so far, I am double sure that you will attract more interviews, invitation, and don't forget that I am happy and it is my joy to be part of your success story. Until when next we meet, uh, stay happy, stay blessed, and 